This is SAT 105 for Unit 12, Food Security. Food security refers to the availability of food and one's access to it. Uh, the World Health Organization defines three facets of this, the availability, the access, and the use. Uh, here's a map of the world uh, showing extreme food insecurity. You can see there's a lot in Africa. Many countries uh, do not have access to any types of food. Or starvation is rampant among them. Over 800 million people do not have enough food routinely. 60% of the world unnourished people live in Asia. In Africa, where there are 16 countries where the undernourished rate is over 35%. So you can see this is a total uh, world problem. Uh, not just parts of the United States, but huge parts of the world uh, have this problem of undernourishment. We can do something about it. We are growing more food. Uh, we know that since the advent of the Green Revolution, which we talked about uh, in another unit, we know that we can use more chemicals, use more pesticides, and we will have more food. And we do this right now. So it is possible to feed all of these people. We know that our food production has been increasing for the past several decades, yet there's more obese people out there. The world has more than 1 billion people who are overweight, yet almost the same amount were undernourished. We have to produce more food every year to face our increased demand. Up to 2 billion people lack food security due to different levels of poverty. But again, we can do something about this. We're finding out that farmers are gradually reducing their numbers. Uh, we need to increase the role of farming uh, across the world. Right now, they have less than 1% of the population. The farming job is not a great job. Uh, it's the invariably society's poorest people. When money is made in agriculture, it's usually made from the very large scale plantations. We need to do something for the farmer. We need to allow them to get to the land easier. We need to teach them about sustainable technology. We need the government to invest in them. We need the small farmers to be treated just like the large farmers and be allowed to make the same type of profit. We have huge rebounds in the amount of food we have for people. Uh, early on, when Columbus uh, discovered America, he brought back with him the potato. The potato changed the world. Uh, the p potato saved people from starvation. Uh, the pa potato is responsible for a huge population uh, growth in Ireland. Uh, the potato grew very easily in Ireland. Uh, however, what happened was that people planted the same potato plant throughout Ireland. Now, the potato could s fulfill much of the protein demands, uh, much of the carbohydrate demands, and you could actually, on a small plot of land, uh, grow enough potatoes to feed your family as well as sell some on the side. Consequently, the Irish population uh, almost tripled in size. However, what happened was a fungus came along and destroyed most of the uh, potato crop. People fled uh, Ireland. Uh, people died from uh, malnourishment. because of people not understanding about the whole idea of food security. We have other problems. Uh, in the United States, uh, used to be filled with chestnut trees. 
it was probably one of the most dominant trees across the whole United States, uh, from uh, Washington State down to Florida, from Maine down to California. Uh, this tree was every place. Uh, chestnuts were produced every year. However, unfortunately, a chestnut blight was introduced around 1900, probably from important uh, Asian stock trees. We've now wiped out almost uh, entire chestnut trees across the United States. Other problems. Uh, the American Dust Bowl. At one point in the 1930s, it was felt that the dust could be seen extending all the way from Nebraska to, to New York City. We had poor growing habits. We tilled the farms every year. Uh, we did not realize that uh, without water that we could trade, can get more and more dust. Uh, when we went through a period where we had less rain, uh, this dust would then gather up in huge clouds and gradually move from west to east. Uh, this was so bad that thousands of people were led to starvation. This also led to the American farmer abandoning the Midwest and heading out to California, where he saw huge growth changes in population along the uh, west coast of the United States. We've learned from this experience uh, about no-till farming. We've learned about how to use water in a better fashion. Uh, now, as you fly across the United States, you see all these circles of green. We've learned to control food security across this entire area. Another problem out there are Africanized bees. Uh, the bee population in uh, South America, Central America, has become much more aggressive. As they've moved upwards, they have interacted with uh, American bees so that the American bees now are becoming quite aggressive too, which leads to huge problems because bees are responsible for much of the pollination of our fruits and vegetables. Uh, without them, we'd probably be eating one-tenth the amount of our fruits and vegetables. We are gradually learning how to control this uh, Africanized bees so that it will continue in the same pollination rate as its normal counterparts. Another problem that we have to control to ensure our food security. Uh, there are problems that as it has been treated in China to control this problem with the bees, uh, the bees were entirely wiped out. Now there's an area in China that was responsible for all the, the best uh, pear production that has no bees, uh, which means that all the pear trees have to be pollinated by hand. So on entire communities, uh, this is what they spend their spring doing, self-pollinating all the trees. Unfortunately, people are moving out of the area, and there may be a severe shortage of pears in China very soon. There's other agricultural diseases out there. The one that's very prominent now is a rust, which is a type of fungus, which is started out in... Um, Ethiopia and gradually spreading across the entire African continent and now has been shown to be up in Iran. We are learning that we can change this by changing the genes to get more resistant plants. This unfortunately right now is leading to starvation uh, from wheat production across most of the African continent. There's climate change, too, that is threatening to reduce our future harvests. We look at here at these graphs, you can see that there's more red being formed here from the period from the 1950s to the 1980s, and then on your right, 2001, 2011. Four hot areas versus two. We're now seeing the advent of a new area, the brown one, which is extremely hot. Because of this, this is changing our whole water watering patterns. The watering patterns change, and consequently, the type of food we produce in areas has to change, too.
So in our challenge to achieve this food security, we had the whole combination between agriculture, hunger, and poverty. Hunger leading to less learning, work, care for the family. Our people become undernourished. They don't have food, so they become too weak to take care of the food. The poor diet uh, leads to more problems with diseases and infection. The malnourishment leads to problems in uh, increased diabetes and increased uh, congestive heart failure. Uh, you have babies that are less healthy because the mother cannot eat as well. So we have to find a way to achieve our food security. Uh, we all know about the global water crisis right now. There's less water throughout the world being used for plants. In Afghanistan, Algeria, Egypt, Iran, and Mexico, they need grain. They can't grow the grain because they just don't have enough water right now. Across the Himalayan mountains, as the polar ice caps, the glaciers decrease in size, we're seeing less water coming down in the rivers. Consequently, this means uh, less crops being grown. In the United States, in California, uh, much of the water is coming from wells or from the Colorado River. Uh, this has decreased in amount. California has a layer of clay three to four feet down. Uh, this is holding the water, but it's also holding the contaminants in the water, the salts that are in the water, so the soil is becoming polluted. Uh, something has to be done about this. Uh, there are places that we don't realize that in Peru, for example, where they had a large amount of water, and it was the best growing conditions for asparagus. It was one of the largest suppliers of asparagus in the world, uh, second or third to, to China. However, because of all the water that's being utilized, the water table has gone down. Because the water table has gone down, the resultant communities around here who grow other vegetables and crops, they're have a, a much lower uh, type of living at this point. In the United States, there's a huge aquifer which extends all the way from North America down, North uh, Dakota down to Texas. So it's trillions of gallons of water. However, this has gone down by several hundred feet. We're finding less water here. Although the water is across the world is pretty constant, as it gets down into aquifers, it is becoming less and less. The land itself is being degraded. Uh, if you use intensive farming techniques, the soil fertility naturally goes down. In many parts of the world, uh, this fertility is not replaced. Uh, many parts of the world is only replaced with harsh chemicals. And so the soil becomes bad. The soil starts to turn back into sand in the desert type of soil. In Africa, if this current trend continues, the continent might be unable to feed most of its population by 2025. Governments are buying up lands in different countries. Uh, for example, uh, uh, the South Korean form, firm has taken over land in Madagascar to grow maize and crops for their biofuels. Libya has land in the Ukraine. China has been buying up land in other parts of Southeast Asia. Egypt is also looking for land in the Ukraine in exchange for access to its natural gas. Qatar is planting fruits and vegetables in Kenya while they build a port for the people in Kenya to utilize. Droughts are increasing throughout the world. Floods are increasing throughout the world. It changes our productivity. We show huge economic losses. Um, when Katrina hit uh, New Orleans, they destroyed more and more of the outlying islands, of the outlying land which protected the area. We are losing 50 miles a year of, of land outside of New Orleans. As has happened, this allowed the water to go in more and more, so we had more and more damage. 
We need to protect these islands in this land. We need to protect this and prevent the soil erosion. But we can feed the world, though. As you saw before, the amount of food being produced is getting better and better. We can start going back to organic ideas. We can see some areas, if we use organic fertilizers, we can get our yield three times that of conventional yield. We can tie different types of uh, farming, uh, rolled farming here, uh, which is following the contours of the land, actually helps sustain water in the area. We have no-till farming. We can do other things. We can start by reducing our waste. We can try different types of protein, for example, insects, which seem to have an exhaustible uh, supply. We can use more and more genetic modifications. Um, we don't have to rely as much upon heavy intensive energy, uh, energy such as fertilizers and pesticides. We have other ways to change alfalfa, for example. We can change the genes in these to allow us to, when we plant alfalfa, to control the weeds by spraying uh, pesticides across here. We don't have to do that anymore. We can change the genes of the alfalfa and get rid of unwanted plants. Uh, corn, we've been using that for years we, in order to weed the fields, in order to get a better yield of corn, we can use different herbicides. Now we can make the corn resistant to this herbicide so it becomes easier to take care of the corn and we have a higher yield. There's other plants on these two slides. Uh, example two is showing how we can change genetic modifications. Uh, the potato, we have the new leaf potato that's out there. Make it resistant to different pests. We have the, the, the potato, which has been developed in India, showing a much higher content of proteins. Rice, we have golden rice, which now will have uh, more vitamin A in it. If this could be utilized in Asia, we would decrease the blindness by over 75%. We can improve current practices um, using GPS, using satellites, using better techniques for analyzing the soil. We can show where should we use pesticides. We can show where we need better fertilizers. As we compare the pictures, this, this is the same picture of the same farm. We can see where the crops are healthy, where we have flooding, where we have unwanted pesticides. And we can change this with modern techniques. We can feed the world. We, today we produce more than two times the average caloric need. We're going to have 10 billion people by 2100. We have to reduce waste. We have to reduce poverty, and we have to change our politics.